Hello, everyone, and welcome. It's great to have you join us today. Welcome. We're still having more people joining. Uh, we're really excited to have you here today. Welcome. It's great to have you. Um, great. So as you join in, um, do share your name and the country we are joining in from. Hi. So my name is Nene Ibezim, and I am speaking to you from the United States, and it's great to meet everyone. I am going to look through the chat and see the different countries where we have people joining in from. Oh my goodness, I am seeing different countries. So I see someone from Indonesia, I'm seeing Canada. Okay, great. I'm seeing... UAE. Ooh, we also have somebody from Kazakhstan, Senegal, Saudi Arabia, Zambia. Oh, great. It's great to have you joining. So as you're joining us, please share your name, share the country we are joining in from. It would be great to know where everyone is coming from. I'm seeing India, Bahrain, Japan, the Philippines. Great, great. So it's great to meet everyone. Welcome once again. Welcome once again. Thank you so much for joining in. So I'm going to get started. Yeah, I see Paraguay as well. Welcome. This is exciting. Uganda. Great. So I'm going to get started now. Um, feel free to share where you're coming from, where you're joining us from. Share your name in the chat and I will get started. So thank you for joining us. This is our first information session for the next cycle of the Global Schools Advocates Program. And we are excited to host this information session, um, basically to share with each and every one of you um, important details about the Global School Advocates Program. So today, this is what we're going to be covering. We're going to be sharing with you um, why we exist. We're going to give you some background information about the Global Schools. And then we have um, feedback from our past advocates, they would like, they would be sharing with you what their experience has been, um, being an advocate in the Global Schools um, Advocates Program. Then we would move on to talk about the advocate's mandate. What does it mean to be an advocate? And then we go into the application process, another important aspect of the information session. And then we have a bit of time for Q&A. So as we go along, feel free to share your questions in the chat. Um, we would be taking um, record of it. So once it's time for the Q&A, we'll have the opportunity to respond to your questions. So let's get started. So why do we exist? Um, so the reason the Global Schools Program exists, you know, we have, there was a study that was done and the study, it was a UNESCO survey and the study discovered that, you know, there were a lot of teachers, 80% of teachers were interested in education for sustainable development, but more than half of these teachers faced challenges with how to implement um, education for sustainable development. So that told us that there was an existing gap, right? And um, also another survey um, informed us that 8% of countries, just 8% of countries have integrated sustainable development. So it means that there was a gap and we understood that schools, educators play a key role in bridging that gap. So because of this existing challenge, this gave birth to the um, so the United Sustainable Development Solutions Network um, initiated Global Schools. And what is the big vision for Global Schools? It's really about creating a world where every student has the environmental and social knowledge, the values and skills to shape a prosperous and sustainable world, right? Um, because we know that our students, the young people, they 
you know, if they have this knowledge and these skills, then it means that our future is guaranteed. So that was what informed um, the Global Schools uh, Initiative. So since the Global Schools were started, this is, uh, this is a snapshot of what the impact um, has been over the years. Right. So the Global Schools program is focused on providing curriculum um, for school-wide activities and actions. And what this looks like is we have the activities guides, we have uh, lesson plans, school toolkits, M&E guides, and school policy templates to promote education for sustainable development. We are also involved in teacher and uh, school leader training on sustainable development. We have our six-month teacher training program which is the Global Schools Advocates Program, um, which I believe um, is the reason why you've joined the information session today to learn more about it. We also have a mentor program as well. Um, we pair our advocates with mentors. So we have mentors. Mentors comprises people that have done the program in the past, right? And then we have uh, virtual monthly sessions and we provide um, support to all of our advocates. So, we also work with NGOs and policymakers as well. Um, we organize training workshops. We also work in toolkit for policymakers and curriculum designers. And one um, other thing that is um, key to the global schools as well is that we are always engaging in global events on um, development, on education. So this is something that we do. And we are, we've had our advocates from over a hundred countries. So if you really want to talk about the world and the world global, then you should think about the global schools program because it is indeed um, a global network. So that brings us to the global schools advocates program. This is our flagship initiative and it's a six month training and advocacy program uh, for educators for school leaders working in schools. And the big idea of the program is to provide resources, training and support to educators or sustainable education and sustainable development, including the SDGs. And um, we are also looking to, you know, we have this global community of educators from around the world, working together, advocating for um, integrating the SDGs in their classrooms, in their school, and in their community as well. So that's another um, important aspect to point out. The Global Schools Advocates Program, it's not just only limited to, as a teacher, as a school leader, it's not just limited to the classroom or your school. There is also the community level um, engagement as well. And this way, you know, we see it as a 360 degree um, interaction and engagement with different communities. So now we are going to watch a video. Um, this is uh, a testimonial from one of our past advocates, Marcela. Marcela is now a senior mentor. She, uh, Marcela is from Argentina. She did the program. Um, she was once an advocate and now She's serving as a senior mentor. So she recorded a video and wanted to share with everyone to give you a bit of insight into what being an advocate um, is like. So I am going to play this now and um, you can let me know if you're able to hear the sound as well. Hello everyone. My name is Marcela Vishan. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I am a Global Schools Advocate. I belong to one of the first cohorts. Becoming an advocate for the Global Schools program has been a transformative journey for me, both personally and professionally. And I want to share with you why this role is so important and why I encourage others to do the same thing. As educators, we hold the power to shape future generations by advocating for the sustainable development goals in our classrooms. We are not just teaching lessons. We are inspiring young people to think critically, care deeply and act for a better world. 
Being a global schools advocate has given me the tools, the network, and the inspiration to bring global issues to, into local contexts. It's about, uh, it's more than just raising awareness. It's about empowering students to become solutionaries, tackling the world's biggest challenges from climate change to inequality. But we can't do this alone. Advocacy is about building a community, a collective voice that speaks for change. By becoming a global school's advocate, you will join a global network of passionate educators committed to making a difference. Together, we can engage students in meaningful learning experiences that connect their local realities to global challenges, sparking change from classroom to the world. In these years as a global school's advocate, has been connected to thousands of teachers from all over the world. I've learned a lot from them. I know that they have learned from me as well. We have followed a journey in which we have shared projects together. We have uh, shared knowledge together. We have shared lots of meetings in which we opened our eyes to the realities of the world. Don't miss this opportunity. Become a Global Schools Advocate now. Indeed, I wholeheartedly agree with, with Marcella. Um, don't miss the, this opportunity. Become a Global Schools Advocate now. Okay, so I will stop sharing my screen now. Um, before we move ahead to hear another testimonial from one of our past advocates, I also wanted to introduce other members of the team present here too as well. Um, I have the director of Global Schools Program present here. Amanda is present here with us as well. Um, Amanda would also be speaking with everyone at a later time during the information session. And also present here is Kendra. Kendra is the project lead of the education team. We also have other project officers um, in Global Schools Program that would be supporting advocates. So I am one of the project officers. There is Alexandra, we have um, Patricia and Sarah. Patricia and Sarah are project officers that support the alumni. So um, when you apply, if you are selected, you would be engaging more um, with Alexandra and um, myself as well, with Kendra, and then um, Amanda would also be available too. So now we'll move on to hear from another advocate who is also on the call here with us. He was once an advocate. So Oegoga, please go ahead. Um, you can share your own experience, what it was like being a Global Schools Advocate. Hello, a very beautiful afternoon from uh, the North Central region of Nigeria. Um, Nene, could you, I mean, Nene, could you please uh, confirm if I'm audible? Sorry. Yes, you are. I can hear you clearly. Okay, that's fine. Um, so my name again is Ono Aiguga John. I uh, volunteer as a global schools advocate, uh, primarily, and uh, secondarily, I uh, also volunteer as um, a senior mentor for the advocacy uh, program. Um, I would say my joining the global schools program uh, is one of the best decisions I've made as a teacher who is passionate for changing uh, learning environments in the best interest of our children, our adolescents, and our teenagers. Uh, uh, and I have gotten that ticket right from way back 2021 uh, to flow in a sea of opportunities. 
This global schools program provided a ticket. How did it do that? I began to develop the competencies, the necessary competencies that is required to deliver transformative education approaches that can really change our learning environment in the best interest of our children. Such competencies as education for sustainable development, global citizenship education, and social justice education. More are in the chain. For example, peace education, which is a vital skill that we teachers need to have in order to train children to be peaceful global citizens. So this ticket from Global Schools Program opened the doors for interesting opportunities. For example, I had the opportunity to attend the Siena International School for Sustainable Development because of the visibility they saw while engaging as an advocate with the Global Schools Program. And I had the opportunity to meet with other passionate advocates for change, for sustainability change, for climate change education and competencies. Experts, world-renowned experts, notably among persons like Professor Jeffrey Sachs, who is the president of the Sustainable Development Solutions Network. So with these trainings, I was able to develop as a teacher to translate it into my classroom and school environment. And in fact, my school community, currently I have been able to inspire students who today are navigating our volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous society that we live today. And I've been receiving a lot of gratitude from them that they are able to try in this kind of world. So I believe strongly that joining the Global Schools Advocacy Program is indeed a great opportunity for you teachers, you school leaders and educators to really make that change in your local environment. So Global Schools Program is that platform that you must belong to. So I must greatly encourage you to do this. There are so much more to gain. Thank you very much for joining this session. And I believe you will go back inspired and motivated to join hands in changing our society for global prosperity. Thank you very much and do have a lovely session today. Thank you so much, Oigoga. That was um that was inspiring to hear. And um it was thank you so much for for that. And now we'd we'll be moving on to talk about the advocate's mandate and we'll be going into details of what it means to be an advocate. And I will be handing over to Kendra. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kendra Heaney. I am the uh, project lead of education uh, on the Global Schools team. Um, it is amazing to be here with all of you. Uh, it's wonderful to see so much interest in the program. Um, and we hope to see you in the program uh, when we begin in February. Uh, so I just want to talk a little bit about um, what your time would look like as a Global Schools advocate um, and what you can kind of expect. Uh, so our advocates mandate um, is six months in length. Um, and there are four key components. So the first component um, is kind of the first month of the six month mandate, and it's completing an advocate training. Um, so really before you start implementing education for sustainable development within your schools, we really want to equip you so that you feel you know, confident and, and ready to, to start taking action. So the first step is taking um, a course. Um, we have two options. One is online on edX, or if you're coming from um, an area with not stable Wi-Fi or internet connection, we also have a WhatsApp uh, version as well. Throughout the training, uh, you'll be able to um, learn all about the Global Schools Program, about sustainable development and it, why it's important, sustainable development goals, and we'll provide you with lots of tips and tricks on how to uh, become, uh, or sorry, how to implement uh, education for sustainable development within your classrooms or within your school-wide communities. 
Once you have successfully completed the uh, training, uh, you will then receive the title of a Global Schools Advocate. Uh, you will receive a, a very comprehensive toolkit um, that provides uh, ample resources and tips and tricks for you to implement um, within your school. The next step is really kind of taking time to introduce your new role as an advocate to your, your school, your school leadership, your colleagues, your students, and really try to promote buy-in. Um, you'll definitely uh, be more successful if you can have the support of your school leadership and your colleagues, especially if you're wanting to implement school-wide initiatives. Uh, so the second month of your mandate is kind of trying to, um, you know, get everybody around you on board, and we provide resources such such as uh, workshop templates, um, PowerPoints, um, appointment letters, basically everything that you would need for that. And then the next kind of chunk of the mandate is the one that will take up majority of the remaining time, and that's actually implementing um, education for sustainable development within your classrooms or within your school-wide communities. Um, we provide ample resources for this. Uh, we provide um, lesson plans available in over 10 languages um, that range from uh, kindergarten up to um, grade 12. Uh, we also provide activity guides, um, things like STEM, um, and just a bunch of really great resources that you can implement with your students. And we also provide case study guides from uh, incredible past advocates like Oyagoga and Marcella that kind of share some ideas of ways that you can implement ESD within your classrooms. And kind of the last stage is we really want to promote the work that you're doing. Um, so the last stage is inspire the world. Um, so we create opportunities for you to share the work that you're doing with your colleagues um, around the world through um, networking coffee houses, through promotion on social media. And as Oya Goga mentioned, sometimes there are opportunities for you to participate in international conferences. Um, so uh, this is the advocate's mandate. Uh, next slide, Nene. So in terms of the timelines, we are opening up applications today um, and applications will be open for one month. So applications will close on November uh, 24th. Um, then the Global Schools team will take some time to review applications. Um, and in January, you will hear whether you have been selected as a Global Schools advocate. Um, and then the official uh, mandate will start in February 2025. Um, and it will be six months up until uh, July 2025. Um, throughout this duration, while we kind of provide some recommendations, um, a as to what you're working on each month is very flexible um, in that you can really structure your, um, your six months however works best for your school. We recognize that some schools may have school closures um, during this period of February through July. For example, here in Canada, schools are not open in July. Um, and so we're very flexible. Even if your school is closed for some of this period, we'll work with you to figure out how to how you can still continue your advocacy, whether you use that time for planning or whether you, you know, do community initiatives or plan professional development sessions for your colleagues. Um, once you finish the six month mandate, uh, you will have the option to, you know, fully uh, graduate and move on from the program. Everybody uh, who has completed the six months will receive a certificate at the end of the six months. Um, but at that point, if you've really enjoyed the program and we we're sure that you will, you'll have the option to extend and continue as an alumni advocate, um, similar to what Marcella and Oya Goga have been doing. Um, and then from there, you'll have different other opportunities, for example, being a mentor to new advocates or maybe climbing the ladder to even be a senior mentor like Marcella and Oya Goga. Next slide, please, Nene. I also want to talk a little bit about the benefits of participation. Um, so one is the, the free online or WhatsApp training. Again, this is a really great comprehensive training to really introduce you to education for sustainable development, um, about the Global Schools program, about global citizenship. Um, really, it's, it's a, a great learning platform if you are passionate about wanting to make a difference in the world and inspiring your students to do the same. The next thing that we offer is monthly online workshops and conversations. So we do run um, monthly professional development sessions. For example, we just had a session on uh, nurturing digital literacy skills. 
In November, we'll have a session on how to get um, buy-in from school leadership, as well as how to promote ESD within um, arts-based um, subjects. So we have really great professional development sessions every month. Um, and then we also work uh, with other um, components of SDSN, for example, the UN at Your Doorstep, uh, which is a new initiative of SDSN to introduce um, students to um, high-level um, UN uh, delegates or representatives. Um, we had our first session uh, yesterday. Um, another access or another benefit of the program is access to an educator network. I think that's one of the strongest things of the Global Schools program is we have educators from so many countries. In our current cohort, we have 400 teachers from 91 countries. Um, so it's always incredible to learn about how education um, happens in these different countries, about some of the sustainable development issues um, that uh, people in these countries are facing. And it's really great to collaborate. Uh, some of our teachers actually do um, like virtual classroom exchanges where, for example, a teacher in India may connect with a teacher in Mexico and then kind of do um, a Zoom call where their students can connect and learn about life in both countries. Another um, great option or another benefit is visibility opportunities and participation in conferences. Um, so you are able to, um, like Oyogoga mentioned, um, there are different um, speaking opportunities, opportunities to attend different conferences. Uh, we also have a Global Schools blog where we encourage um, advocates to write about their work and we publish um, and they can kind of get international recognition on the work that they're doing. Um, each advocate that's in the program also uh, is paired with a, a group of advocates and a mentor. Um, the mentors have completed the program in the past and advocates are uh, grouped with a mentor based on their uh, geographical region and the uh, subject and grade level that they work in. So the mentor has direct experience implementing ESD in your type of setting, um, in your subject with the grade level of your students. And so you will have kind of WhatsApp communication, uh, monthly meetings. Um, and so you are really able to get this support, um, this collaboration, ability to brainstorm back and forth ideas with a group of fellow educators and someone who's completed the program in similar contexts as you. Um, the other component is a comprehensive advocates toolkit. Again, I kind of mentioned this earlier, the online or WhatsApp training, you'll receive a very comprehensive toolkit with ample resources. Um, so many resources, it's wonderful. You won't really have to recreate the wheel if you don't want to, um, and it will greatly benefit you in your work with ESD. And then finally, uh, you will receive a certificate of completion at the end of your six months. Um, and we have found that this certificate is really beneficial for advocates um, to get into conferences, for their resumes or CVs, um, uh, promotions within their school, um, and just a bunch of other opportunities as well. Um, so with that, um, those are the benefits of the program as, met, as well as many others. Um, I do see if you have any questions, please do put them in the chat and we will get to them in the Q&A. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Nene. Thank you, Kendra. Now we move on to talk about the application process. And um, you have heard what the Global Schools Advocates Program, what it is about, what the expectation is, and the timeline too as well. So the application process is simple, um, you would need to fill out an application form online. Um, this is the link to the application form, uh, globalschoolsprogram.org slash apply. And um, when you go to the application form, you have a series of questions. Um, first, you would you know have the opportunity to see a description of the program. And then um, you would also get to read about the eligibility guidelines as well. So one thing to share with everyone is that the program is only open to educators working in school or school leaders as well. So because the program is focused on students in school, so this is only open to educators that are actively teaching in schools or school leaders that are, you know, working in schools. Um, so that's an important criteria for the Global Schools 
um, Advocates Program. Another thing also that you would find in the form is you would have to also, um, you would have to respond to some essay questions um, as well. So once you fill out the form, then um, the Global Schools team would review and you would get feedback around mid-December. And if you are selected um, for this, for the next cycle, you will be notified by January, and then you can expect to start your advocate's journey um, by February of next year. And um, when you successfully complete it, complete it you will be done um, in July 2025. So what are we looking for? Um, we are inviting application from um, all over the world. Um, so we are looking for applicants that are teachers or school leaders. It could be at the primary school or secondary school um, level. Um, so even if you're a teacher that you are employed through volunteering programs, um, you and volunteers, Fulbright, um, even from the Teach for All network, you're also eligible as well. What is really important is that you are actively teaching within the your global school's um, journey. That's what is really important. Uh, we also require that the applicants have a high level of English because the training will be done in English language um, as well. And it will also give you the opportunity to fully engage with um, the materials that we would be sharing. We also have some translations, but our trainings, uh, professional development workshops are uh, usually delivered using the English language. Um, another thing is that we would expect that you would be willing to commit to a minimum of five hours per week um, for the role. Um, this would involve the initiative or engagements you would be doing in your classroom or school or the um, community as well. And uh, we're also looking out for demonstrable passion for the sustainable development goals. Um, this is something that is really important and we would be looking out for it in your application. I uh, would also want you to demonstrate a willingness to learn and engage with a global community of teachers. And finally, we will be looking out for you know, your ability to inspire, motivate um, other teachers. We are looking out for people who are willing to you know, go out of their way, who are willing to advocate. Um, so because that's what the Global Schools um, Advocates Program is about, advocating. So we'll also be looking out for that as well. So some tips for uh, the application when you start. Um, I like your teaching experience. Um, we would want to see that. And um, also in the essay questions as well, um, it would be great to showcase, you know, your English language skills and demonstrate, you know, a passion for sustainable development. Um, it's not compulsory that you must be experienced in doing sustainable um, development work. That's not compulsory, but um, which, if you have any experience or, you know, you've done any engagement that relates to the sustainable development goals, it would be great to spotlight those experiences. We would also want to look out for um, leadership experience too as well. So you can also highlight your leadership experience working in your classroom, your school, or in, the, in your community. So all of these that we have shared with you, you can still, you still have access um, to it. Uh, on the Global Schools website. This is a QR code, you can scan it, but um, once you visit the website, you will be able to get more details um, about it. So you do not need to remember all of the details that we have shared. So we have our advocate terms of reference, which would detail for you what it means to be an advocate. We also have a frequently asked questions um, document as well. And then the Global Schools Program website is a great resource. So if you're looking to still get more information or even learn about the work that global schools advocates do in their schools and in their communities, you can visit our website. Uh, you would have more details 
um, there as well. And Kendra talked about the Global Schools Program blog. Uh, so that really tells the, the impact, you know, the journey of Global Schools Advocate and alumni um, as well. So on that note, uh, now we can move to the Q&A. So if you have any question, um, you can put it in the chat. And I would be inviting Amanda, the Director of Global Schools to um, handle this. And um, I think Amanda also can also share about some of the frequently asked questions that keeps coming up um, for potential applicants. So I'll hand over to you now, Amanda, thank you. Thank you so much, Nene, for leading the wonderful session. Um, it's very exciting to see all of the interest in the program echoing what Kendra said. Um, it's very nice to have all of you here today. I'm going to pull up our frequently asked questions document so I can also reference this during our Q&A portion. Um, so please put your questions in the chat. Uh, we're very happy to answer them, anything about the Global Schools program itself or about uh, this specifically the Global Schools Advocates program. Uh, so I do see uh, one uh, initial question that was in the chat from um, one person here. I'm not sure exactly uh, where you're from, but thank you so much for being here. Um, so the question is if there is any payment required and no, uh, you do not have to pay to be a part of the Global Schools Advocates program. All Global Schools Advocates receive um, a free uh, scholarship equivalent. Um, so you don't need to pay anything uh, to the Global Schools program to participate. Mm -hmm. And then another question uh, on the recording. Yes, we will uh, share the recording to all of the registrants. Um, so you can reference this after the call and we will also um, post this on our YouTube page. So you can find uh, Global Schools on our uh, Global Schools program on YouTube for some of our professional development sessions as well as this session. Um, so you can register on the globalschoolsprogram.org slash apply. So if maybe Nene or Kendra can re-put that link into the chat, that would be wonderful. Um, I have a couple of questions that were sent uh, directly to me. Um, so one question was about uh, leaving your school and going to a new school during um, the Advocates program. Um, so this is really considered on a case-by-case -case basis. We would highly encourage you um, to apply if you're staying at the same school for six months. Um, it just helps you make a lot more impact and really get more out of the program if you can work with the same uh, group of students. Um, and then there's another question about how many teachers from one school can apply. So there is really no limitation uh, there. We don't have a quota of um, people uh, from each school. Um, however, we um, do try to review all applications um, holistically. Um, so we'll review each one individually, but there is no quota from people from each school. Um, so one person said that the application ended today. Um, so actually we just opened the form as part of this session. So it should be open now to accept all applications. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a question about uh, people working in nonprofit organizations. Um, so I'll also maybe expand this to informal education. Um, so in the past, we have had advocates uh, participate if they were teaching in a, a community center or um, in a refugee camp or something similar. So this has been something in the past uh, where we've had advocates um, not working in a formal institution. Um, so, but their applications are evaluated um, in the same way as all of the other applications. And as Nene said, the main um, kind of criteria is that you're working with students in the primary, pre-primary or secondary uh, space. Um, 
So we have a question, is the program eligible for teachers who are planning to teach in new schools in January? Um, so yes, technically it is uh, open to teachers, uh, even if you're moving to a new school in January. Um, so we would encourage you to include the information of the school where you will be as an advocate. Um, so if you already know that you're moving to a new school in January, um, please apply with that information um, for the time of the program. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at these other questions. So um, there's a question on uh, the program across curriculum levels. Uh, so the program is really open for teachers or school leaders on the pre-primary, primary, and secondary. Um, unfortunately, it's not open for uh, educators working within universities or tertiary education, but we do have a sister program called the SDG Academy, and they do a lot of work on the SDGs uh, for tertiary education. So we would definitely encourage you to check out their programs and courses. They have over 40, cor 40 courses um, for educators at the tertiary level. Mm -hmm. um, Let's see. So there's a question about um, time zones. Um, it's a little more specific, but I'll expand it for everyone here on time zones. Um, so the first uh, training, um, it'll be on WhatsApp or on edX, our two platforms. And so one of those options, um, it's really asynchronous and you can do this on your own time and you will be um, kind of given the option um, based on what works the best for your schedule for the initial training. And the lectures and uh, sessions, uh, we usually try to do them on uh, Saturdays because this is uh, one of the days where the majority of schools um, don't have um, classes. We've, we've seen across the world, across our network, and we usually try to do them um, as early as possible um, for the Western Hemisphere so that everyone um, can join. But we also have project officers all across the world, so we often host sessions at different times. So yes, this program is very global and open um, to uh, global participants. Um, so we do encourage, encourage you to reapply um, if you haven't been uh, successful in the past. We have had people that have applied multiple times and become advocates. Um, and uh, no, the program is not for teachers who just have six months of experience. Um, we love to see teachers with a wide variety of experience. In our current cohort, we have educators and teachers that maybe have one to three years of experience, and we have others that have over 20 or 30 years of experience. Um, so we really try to bring everyone together and really share learnings with the global uh, community. All right, there's a question from Nadine on what particular time, if it requires 15, five hours a week for the training, excuse me. Um, so the five hour commitment per week, uh, this is also addressed in the FAQ online. Uh, this is really uh, trying to encompass the time that you would spend in your school, um, maybe working with your students, working on an SDG project, um, maybe planning for your activities that you might do as a global schools advocate. Um, so we, as the um, kind of the leads of the team, we don't require you to necessarily, you know, be on sessions with us for five hours. The program is really how you make it in your school community, um, following the guidelines and working with your teachers. Um, and we do estimate most advocates spend about five hours a week thinking about their activities that they would like to do in their school community. So that's why we say the, the five hours a week. Um, so we have something about the future opportunities. So what are future opportunities if someone uh, joins the program? So you heard from two alumni, um, Marcella and Oyagoga today. Um, so they have uh, very uh, different experiences, but they also have done a lot of incredible things. Um, so in general, we have seen um, advocates getting experience in sustainable development and maybe 
using that to do um, another job opportunity in their community. Uh, we've also seen advocates um, become, you know, very passionate about a certain topic and they choose to, um, you know, participate in a, a master's program or other opportunities. So we try to support our advocates as much as possible in their uh, future pursuits. Um, we also um, provide opportunities for advocates to uh, speak at our different virtual engagements we're doing at the United Nations, um, also feature them in our case study guides and publications if they would like their work to be showcased. Um, so there's a lot of incredible opportunities um, that we offer for our advocates and our schools if they um, become a part of the network. Um, so there's one question from Lionel about working um, with a program that provides teacher development through a university. Um, so we would consider that to be a, a teacher training institution or tertiary education. Um, so that would kind of fall under our tertiary education program, which is the SDG Academy, which I mentioned. So I would definitely encourage you to go um, to their website and learn more about their work. Mm -hmm. All right, I hope I saw most of the questions in the chat. I know they're coming in, so I'm trying my best to follow all of the questions. Um, but just to mention on the, the frequently asked questions on our site, um, we have different categories of answers to frequently asked questions. Um, one is on the program specifics. There's also specific answers on the training course and what the training format looks like. Um, there's also answers on engaging with the global schools uh, network, the responsibilities of an advocate, and um, other questions um, that might not fit into different categories. So we tried our best um, to, to answer those uh, for you all. I'll give it maybe a few more seconds to see if any other questions come into the chat. Mm -hmm. Um, Amanda, maybe you also want to talk about for teachers that might be interested in applying and um, having the permission of the school leaders um, to do the program. Yeah, thank you so much, Nene, uh, for bringing up that point. Um, so we there's a question on the application. So we just opened the application form. Um, that uh, asks uh, if you as an educator has a school leader uh, support to engage in the program. And the reason that this is a question is we uh, find that, you know, advocates and educators um, have a really great experience in the program when they have, you know, their school leader supporting that they can participate. Um, so we do encourage you to um, ask your school leaders or your administration, um, just share the information about the program um, and indicate that you have um, talked to them about the, the program. Um, there's three options. You can say, uh, yes, you have school leader support, no, or um, that you haven't asked yet. Um, and we, we will say that uh, teachers and schools that have indicated they do have a school leader support are um, more competitive um, applicants. Um, so this is something that we put this question there mainly for you all to ensure you have a good experience um, in the program. Mm -hmm. Um, one other thing, um, the tips in the applications, um, is we do use an AI uh, detector um, on our applications. Um, so we strongly discourage the use of um, AI and we do disqualify um, any um, applications that use um, AI, especially any generative AI software. Um, and this is just because, uh, you know, it, we are not able to accurately evaluate all of the applications um, if, if every single answer is the same answer. Um, so any use of um, AI, we will be disqualifying because we are not able to accurately assess um, those educators and those applicants. Um, so please do not use AI in your applications. Um, thank you for that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have two last questions and then I'll turn it back over to Nene. I'll answer these last two questions. Um, so is this relevant for homeschool educators? 
Um, so I would say um, it could be re relevant for homeschool educators, especially if you might be working um, in a co-op where you have um, the opportunity to engage in, you know, classes with um, many students. So we encourage you just to explain uh, your situation um, on the, the website, as I know that um, sometimes um, homeschool educators also work with a large uh, variety and different um, students. So, and then the last question from Cedric, um, how sustaining will it be uh, for being an advocate? Um, so it will not be a uh, contract of service. Um, so advocates do not receive, um, you know, money or finances from the global schools uh, team to be an advocate. Um, instead, you receive, you know, a fully free scholarship funded program from us. Um, and so we will provide you with the training and the facilitation. Um, so you do not receive any um, finances or contracts um, as part of uh, this program. Mm -hmm. um, and I will just answer one more that was directly sent uh, to me. Um, so if your school is already part of the Global Schools uh, Network and you have the Global Schools uh, Certificate, uh, yes, you still need to submit the form to be an advocate um, because we work with uh, many schools across the world um, and there's a lot of different uh, people and indiv individuals we work with at those schools. Um, and so we always want to know uh, who um, is excited about being um, an advocate representing their school. So yes, um, you do need to submit the form, even if you're part of the Global Schools Network. Mm -hmm. All right, Nene, back to you. <laughs> thank you, Amanda. And thank you, everyone, uh, once again, for joining in and listening. Um, at this point, I would want to leave us, you know, um, with this. Do share the application with teachers in your network. If you know any other person that is committed to education for sustainable development and you believe the person would be a right fit, do share the application um, link with the teacher. Um, there's only a month uh, to apply for the program, so it's not a really long time. So we encourage you to submit a strong application and I wish um, each and everyone present here like all the best. We had, I think, an average of 70 to 80 people. So it would be great if everyone on this call um, get accepted into the program. So um, all the best. And thank you so much once again for joining us. Um, we were really delighted to have been able to host this information session and share all these details with you. So all the best and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.